Well, I think inquiry is all about uh, you know just providing those avenues where, where students are become engaged and exciting, excited about the learning and they want to find answers to their questions. And the excitement um, is so rich that they're actually going home and they're talking to their parents about it and they're talking to their friends and they're getting others excited as well. That to me is, is and inquiry. I love, and I love the freedom the kids have to go after their own questions. Mm -hmm. So that's where I see the shift in the, in the two curriculums, the old mm -hmm. and the new is that we don't have to come up with all the right questions That's to right. ask them. Yeah, and we're facilitators in the process, like we're guiding them through it. And uh, it always amazes me too when, uh, when you observe classrooms where inquiry is prevalent, how students don't even have a, a realization of, of time. Um, they're just focused and the bell will ring. And you know, I've even heard stories from some teachers that they don't even want to go out for recess in elementary, and, and that to me is amazing. And the stories around the supper table are about what we learned at school today. Yeah, and again, powerful when uh, you have uh, teachers coming up to the principal saying, I don't know what they're doing in social studies, but keep doing it. And the fact that I've also heard some parents say, uh, geez, you know, I, I've actually had to go on the internet and learn some of this stuff because, you know, my, uh, my, my son or daughter keeps, uh, you know, coming home and asking me these questions and, and they're, I'm, I'm getting interested, so it's leading to inquiry for them as well. So I think it's yeah. a great tagline, inquiry learning. It's contagious. It is. That's a great tagline, actually. It is. Well, I think it just it, inquiry lends itself to this new program, and and I know that uh, my work with teachers uh, when we started with implementation, um, just sitting down with them and looking through the outcomes. There's a lot of fear because there are many, many outcomes, and uh, you know a lot of teachers were looking at how am I going to you know cover all of this. But um, teachers that embrace the, the new curriculum and the shift in pedagogy and who have incorporated inquiry have quickly realized that uh, it's not always about coverage, it's about uncovering the outcomes. And uh, by using the inquiry process, they're amazed at how many outcomes they actually cover by having students go through and do the research and, and find answers to the questions and being a facilitator in the learning and developing that community of learners atmosphere. Well, for me, it's it's just simple things to get at inquiry. Um, you know, just just using those clips, like going on uh, YouTube if your school doesn't have a block, but there are ways around that. Uh, teacher tubes, another one. Video clips, quotes, just to spark interest, and that's an easy way to get at it, and it can lead to greater projects or um, or inquiries. And because I think sometimes um, teachers, when they think of inquiry, they think, oh, it's this long, drawn-out process, and I don't have the time. And that's not always true because it can just be something as simple as a question on the board and a what if question and ask students to, to try to find answers or make meaning of that question. I like your reference to all the strongly visual elements. Mm -hmm. Today's digital kids love 21st the 21st century learners. Right, 21st mm -hmm. century learners. So we need those short video clips. We don't mm -hmm. need a 35 minute movie. No. Or we can use some cool Web 2.0 tools like Animoto and VoiceThread to really engage their interest and get them wondering and inquiring. Absolutely. And for me, the very best practice, I think, for teachers is they need to be curious. They need to model the curiosity, the inquiring minds themselves mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not have all the answers and be willing to learn along with the kids. Kind of this shared learning, yeah. I think, is really powerful. Yeah, and again, just to uh, touch on uh, your, your comment about uh, Animoto and VoiceThread, because again, I know doing sessions, sometimes uh, there are teachers in the audience who are a little bit scared um, because it's uh, a technology and maybe they don't have the background. But I just would like to say that uh, teachers that I know that have tried this, a lot of times they don't have the expertise. And the amazing thing, like you mentioned about 21st century learners, the kids know how to do these things. And again, you're just facilitating and there'll be students in the room that can help and it's very, very easy to do. Yeah, so I, I wouldn't uh, you know, be scared or worried about trying to use these things because the kids will figure it out. <laughs> and that's a shift, right? Mm -hmm. Where it we is. don't have to have all the expertise the, yeah. in the room. Mm -hmm. Some of it can come from our kids. Right. And they can shine and lead mm -hmm. during different parts of the inquiry process. Absolutely.